Thanks, Tracy. Well, Pine Bluff police are investigating a homicide after a man was found dead with a gunshot wound on Willow Street just before 3.30 this morning. Officers were called to 33rd Avenue and Willow Street where they found several vehicles shot up and a man lying on the ground. He was pronounced dead at the scene. There is currently no suspect. And the Santa Fe community of Texas is grieving this morning after a 17 year old armed with a shotgun and a pistol opened fire at the high school, killing 10 people there. The suspected shooter, Demetrios Pagortzis, is now in custody on murder charges. Santa Fe police confirmed possible explosive devices were also found on and off campus. It was the nation's deadliest attack since the massacre at Parkland, Florida earlier this year. Out of respect for the victims of yesterday's attack, President Trump has ordered the United States flag to be flown at half staff until sunset on May 22nd. That's next Tuesday. North Little Rock police make an arrest in the murder of a homeless man in the Riverfront Park earlier this month. Willie Earl Washington is charged with murder in the second degree. He turned himself in after detectives named, his, named him as a suspect in the stabbing death of Ronald Campbell on May 5th. Police have not said what led up to the murder. Washington is being held without bond pending his first court appearance. North Little Rock has this man, 39-year-old Lynn Buster Davis, behind bars after detectives linked him to a string of recent robberies. Officers arrested him Thursday night on the 800 block of Cypress Street. He's in the county jail facing three counts of robbery and three counts of theft. The BB School District releases a statement of support for the middle school principal, Brandi Dillon. She was arrested Thursday amid charges of hosting a house party with underage drinking and smoking. Superintendent Belinda Shook says people can be quick to assume someone is guilty until proven innocent, which is the opposite of how our legal system works. She says Principal Dillon is on paid administrative leave. After multiple attempts to get a casino proposal on the November ballot, a citizens group is suing Attorney General Leslie Rutledge. THV 11's Erica Ferrando was in Judge Wendell Griffin's courtroom Friday where Rutledge was set to testify. Well, there was more outrage Friday over the disparaging remarks, we don't need to say them, I'm sure that you've heard them by now, about African nations and others attributed to President Trump during an Oval Office meeting on immigration. Several foreign governments requested an explanation from U.S. diplomats. CBS's Weijia Zhang has more from the White House, where the president signed an official proclamation honoring Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. New overnight, the government is shut down. Senators blocked a House-approved continuing resolution that would have paid the bills through mid-February. Now, the White House says it won't reopen immigration talks until Congress reopens the government. Democrats were holding out for a comprehensive spending bill and a deal to protect the so-called dreamers who were brought to the U.S. illegally as children. Well, the Little Rock Zoo is wrapping up Bear Awareness Week, and they've got some new additions. Two male sloth bears, oh my gosh, look at their faces! Wow, so sweet. Have joined the zoo's current female sloth bear as part of a breeding initiative. Listen, that girl, look at her. <laughs> She's, She's got her two men. So sweet. You go, sloth bear. You go, girl. <laughs> sloth bears are listed as vulnerable by the International <laughs> Union for Conser Conservation of Nature. <laughs> Conservation of Nature. Oh, Winnie. I, <laughs> which sorry, means, Tracy. <laughs> <laughs> which means they are likely to become endangered unless threats to their survival and reproduction are mitigated. 
No, no, we got to keep the sloth bear. One sloth bear at a time. You go, girl. <laughs> I might have to pay a visit to the zoo just to, you know, give her a little, a little attaboy. Right. <laughs> you go, girl. I wonder which one she'll pick. I kind of uh, like the one on the left. Oh, I don't want the guy on the right to feel bad, though. I mean, you know what? Survival of the fittest, Tracy. It's sloth bear. Go for it. Listen, she can have both. That's right. She gets to have her both, man, if she wants to. The zoo gave her both. She gets to have both. All right. <laughs> We're being told we have to do the weather now. <laughs> the weather. The sloth love affair is over. Tra hey, Tracy, right. is it a good day to go to the zoo and meet the sloth bear? It's an excellent day to go to the zoo and meet the sloth bears and her two men. <laughs> Let's you go, go girl. Thanks, Marielle. Well, the funerals have begun for some of these 17 people killed in this week's Florida high school shooting. As we learned Friday, an overlooked tip might have prevented the bloodshed. CBS's Kenneth Craig has details from Parkland, Florida. Disturbing story this morning, the bodies of two infants are headed to the state crime lab today after they were found in a suitcase in Cross County. Sheriff's deputies say the bodies were found in a purple suitcase along a county road. The babies appear to be twins. Autopsies by the state crime lab should help investigators determine how and when the infants died. We have updates this morning on three separate fatal shootings Thursday in central Arkansas. We begin in Jacksonville, where police released the names of two people killed in an apparent murder-suicide. The victim is 49-year-old Dennis Marie Hildreth, apparently shot to death by her ex-husband, James Price, also 49. Both were found in their Hamilton Street home around 1.30 p.m. Thursday. A four-year-old child police found at the scene is now back in custody with family. In Little Rock, police continue investigating the city's fourth homicide of 2018, a killing at the Eagle Nest Apartments. Witnesses say around 745, someone knocked on 23-year-old victim Devin Howard's door. When he answered, two men forced their way in and started fighting him. The witnesses ran into another room and heard the attacker, attackers demanding money, then a gunshot. Police found Howard on the floor already unconscious. Medics pronounced him dead at the scene. Detectives don't know who the suspects are. And in Conway, police are urging anyone with information to give them a call as they investigate Thursday night's apparent shooting of a would-be robber. A homeowner who already knew the suspect, 18-year-old DeMarco Taylor, apparently invited him to, into a home on Bernard Drive, then claims Taylor tried to rob the place. That's when the homeowner shot and killed Taylor. No charges have been filed, but the investigation is still ongoing. Well, the long weekend got longer for thousands of students along the U.S. 67 corridor, all because of the flu. At least five districts chose to call off classes Friday to disinfect their campuses. They ranged from Cabot and its 10,000 students to Rosebud with several hundred. Administrators have been watching their attendance levels and staff levels dip for weeks. We thought being off Monday and then, then uh, having an AMI day today, which they give us that, would give us extra time to sanitize the buildings and hopefully get our kids away from each other for four days to maybe stop the spread of flu. The state says White County hasn't reported abnormally high numbers of the case, uh, cases of the flu in surrounding counties. 
Well, unlike medical marijuana, one component of the marijuana plant is already available in Arkansas. Now, as THV 11's Erica Ferrando tells us, farmers want to produce CBD oil right here in Arkansas. Thanks, Tracy. Well, THV 11 got new information Thursday surrounding the death of 18 year old Ebby Stepik. Her remains were identified Wednesday after a two and a half year search. I took a closer look at allegations from a close friend of Ebby's about a 911 call made just after her disappearance in 2015. Come to find out that she's been there all this time. We might have known what happened to her. This makes me sick. Kaylee Foley says she was one of Ebby Stepek's best friends. Ebby was living with the Foley's just a couple of weeks before she disappeared. It's hard to go through, honestly. After they met with the detective first assigned to the case, days after she disappeared and learned where her car was found, Kaylee and her mom Margie went to Shalamont Park to see if Kaylee picked up on any clues. I got to right about, you know, I got right about here and I just got hit with the smell of decomposition. Margie says she called for Kaylee to head back to the car. I didn't want her to smell it. <laughs> and then she was, kept asking me why, and I said I smell decom decomposition coming from that drain. That's when Margie says she called 911. 911, what's the location of emergency? I just came out of a meeting with Detective Williams in regards to uh, a missing person named Ebby. Uh, okay. We were able to get one of those 911 calls from the Pulaski County Sheriff's Office. One of the calls was routed there. I brought my daughter here, who's a friend of hers, and we just started walking around and I could smell the composition. So I was just tried to call his phone and okay. he didn't call me back. Could you... I'll send somebody here to investigate. PCSO then calls LRPD dispatch to relay the information, where the dispatcher waits more than two minutes for a supervisor to come to the phone before the line goes dead. The dispatcher called again and spoke to a different LRPD dispatcher before speaking with an unidentified woman. That's when the information was relayed. She said she smelled something decomposing, and she was worried that that may be related to the case somehow. Foley claims she called at least three times. Little Rock Police Department claims their 911 record system wipes clean every 30 days. She says more than an hour passed before LRPD officers showed up at the scene. I was kind of dismissed by him. This park was gone through with dogs and they, you know, would have picked up on that and um, 
It must be an animal or something. Abby's car was found in this lot at Shalamont Park, just steps from the entrance into the drainage system. If you walk with me down this way, you'll see that her remains were found right here at this end of the drainage system, only about 100 feet from where she possibly entered that system. I'm very angry. I'm, I'm angry for Ebby because she didn't deserve to lay down there like that. It's just hard to think someone you know or someone you were best friends with went missing and then turns out they were where you thought they were the whole time and no one did anything. They think someone needs to be held responsible. The Little Rock Police Department tells THV 11 this is an open investigation and they won't be doing any further interviews. A celebration of Ebby's life will be held at Christ Community Church today at 2 p.m. That's on the campus of Little Rock Christian Academy. Police in Hot Springs are on the lookout for the driver who hit and killed a cyclist and then drove off. Brett McCullough was riding his bicycle eastbound on US 70 West in the outside traffic lane on Wednesday when an unknown vehicle struck him from behind. The person driving left the scene. In a Facebook post from Bicycle Advocacy of Central Arkansas, McCullough's sister, Tippy McCullough, described him as someone with a good heart who was kind, quick-witted, and never met a stranger. A Little Rock man is sitting behind bars charged with 75 counts of felony distributing, possessing, or viewing child pornography. Frank Dunn was taken into custody yesterday after officers executed a search and seizure warrant on a home on Honey Bear Drive. Dunn is being held at the Pulaski County Jail without bond. An Illinois family is searching for answers after their loved one is found dead in the Arkansas River. 28-year-old Brennan Willis was a tourist in Little Rock for a wedding. He was last seen Saturday night when he left his hotel to go for a jog. A bystander saw his body floating near the Broadway Bridge on Monday. Police were able to identify him because he still had his ID. His mother says he went for a run downtown after the wedding reception Saturday night and never came back. We're there for each other. We've been through a lot. So there's no way I ever thought that, you know, something like this would happen and I, you know, have to worry about losing my child. Little Rock police say they do not suspect foul play at this point, but will continue their investigation to determine a cause of death. A ruling from a jury earlier this week finds Dr. Robert Rook of Conway not guilty on eight counts of sexual assault. A judge also declared a mistrial on eight other counts against the Conway doctor after the Faulkner County jury couldn't re reach a decision on those charges. Prosecutor Jason Barrett says he plans to, quote, talk with the victims whose counts are still viable and later determine how to proceed. And opponents of the Ten Commandments display at the Arkansas State Capitol are suing to have it removed. One of the lawsuits was filed by the American Civil Liberties Union of Arkansas on behalf of four people. The other was filed by a group including the Freedom From Religion Foundation and the Arkansas Humanist Association. The lawsuits argue the monument, which was installed last month, is unconstitutional. It's an unconstitutional endorsement of government or religion by the government.